I think probably it's, it's a little sad that it's education as well. <laughs> But I had one of those phone calls of, hello, Sue, will you come and chair NZQA? So most of my career has been at a governance leadership level, not as an executive leader. And um, I said, sure, you know, because for me, uh, it's making a difference to New Zealanders. And actually, you can always sort something out. Because for me, business is quite simple. Yeah. You work out what are we here to do and then what are we going to do to deliver on that? So I went into, but how could she chair this because she's not an educationalist. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know in, really very much about NZQA at the time, went in and we started with a board nearly all educationalists and we'd had various acting yeah. CEs. Yeah. So we got the whiteboard out and I got the executive of the day to come in with the board. And most of the executive had not been with the board either, so there was no mm -hmm. working together. And we started by saying, well, what do you do? And someone would say, oh, I do this, and we'd write a circle on the board. What, what else do we do? We do this. And we got all the bits together and actually it was quite simple. We just were quite a boring organisation that was there to run the secondary school exams, run it, not design it, run it. Uh, we were the guardians of the New Zealand framework. We did education equivalents and with other other mm -hmm. jurisdictions, and we quali quality assured providers non-university. There were quite a few other bubbles on that diagram as well, but if you really boiled it down, it was. That. Now, if we put that in the context of leadership, the very first thing was to say, what on earth is NTQA there to do? And it was a dark time because we were on the front page of the paper just about every day. So with that clarity, we were able to recruit a chief executive, uh, put in a structure and commence the journey. Now, by that stage, the staff were so battered because every day they were chewed up in the media that really we didn't answer the telephone, we weren't responsive, we were defensive and trying to say but protect something if it had gone wrong. Yeah. So in a different way than you will deal when maybe you're at a startup or a building organisation and you say let's all get together and think yeah. what are the behaviours that are important. We yeah. said let's just get a few simple behaviours that will support from the top, the board and the executive. We will be available. So that looks like answering the phone. We'll be really transparent. And if it's ours to fix and we've mucked up, we'll fix it. But if it's not, we'll, we'll acknowledge it, but we'll try to give it to whoever yeah would help with the situation. And if in doubt, if we were trying to sort something, we would think what was the best interest for the learner. Yep. So what did that look like? Yep. We entered the next round of the secondary school exam. So we said, what we're going to do is every time we have a muck up, we'll be open about it. So we decided, how could we perhaps risk manage that for learners, yeah. the sector, the ministers, we would do a weekly report through that first exam season and we'd say this week it's been hugely demanding, two million scripts gone out to half a million kids and the challenges were that there was a storm and these kids didn't make it to there so this is what we did or the challenge was X, Y, Z. So we decided we'd use the word challenge not problems. And so the first couple of, you know, there was plenty to tell because we were a broken organisation. Because we'd been lack, lacked our clarity, we didn't have good systems, we didn't have good processes, examiners, burnt papers, all sorts of things I just didn't even believe could happen. So we would do these <laughs> weekly reports and the first couple got some good traction with the media but we kept going out and we'd front them. And then later, and, and I said, everything, we don't hold back on anything. So we went out, um, I think that first season went okay, and we said the next season we'd do the same thing. And we had less errors because we had more process in place. But I thought where we felt we'd started to make it was one time we put out a press release that we'd put the X and Y axis wrongly labelled. Yep. And the Dom Post rang up and said, was there a second page to this release? 
and we said, no, 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 that's, you know, we labelled it wrongly and we'll mark it. If the yeah. people did it this way, we'd mark it that way. And if it's this way, we will mark yeah. it this way. They said, but that's not even a story. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> You'd earned the respect that we, you could be trusted, we'll tell, yeah. share, the, share yeah. the truth. And, and so that was a very, very challenging time. Um, it did mean we had to exit some of the services. We did have performance issues to deal with. But we just held fast to, we will answer the phone, we will reply, and and we'll get clear what we're on about. Yeah. And we then got, a, with the help of the minister, a board of mixed skills around the table to support the chief executive. And it was very much that, what I call the seesaw partner between the board and the exec team on getting that clarity of purpose. Uh, and I call it the seesaw, meaning it shouldn't be that way where you know board's dominant and it shouldn't be that way where the chief executive, it should be just balancing like that and you're feeding and supporting each other. And then you're monitoring how you're going. And, and once we'd earned the right to be trusted really, we could start to do some of the build. So that was probably one of the most challenging things.